I would request uh, Professor Nargis Ahmed, uh, Department of Nursing, Ali University, to start uh, today's lecture uh, session. Nargis, ma'am, please unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you, Hassan Bhai. Assalamu alaikum, namaskar, and good evening to all of our guests, delegates, and base members. Today we have joined together for base lecture number 49. Today's topic is very relevant for research scholars, need set uh, students of English. Today's topic is constructing deconstruction, the basics. But before starting the actual lecture, let me tell something about our organization, BASE. Bengali Academia for Social Empowerment, popularly known as BASE, is a developmental organization registered as a trust by a collective of academicians, scholars, professionals, and other like-minded people working for community and social development. BASE is dedicated in different activities like information and resource sharing, gathering data and preparing database, organizing seminar conferences, working on publication of journals and magazines, uh, encouraging uh, young generation in education by uh, organizing educational camps and career guidance program, providing admission helpline and many more things. During pandemic time and often crisis, BASE helped people by opening and serving more than uh, 25 community kitchens all over West Bengal, distributing foods and relief materials to poor and affected people, distributing study kits to children, especially in North and South 24 Parganas, helped many migrant laborers to grow, go back their own states and so on. Since more than three months, BASE has been organizing multiple insightful online lectures on different aspects for the purpose of disseminating and raising knowledge and awareness for social empowerment, to organize intellectually, building a network of related people in higher education and create a better linkage among intellectuals of various institutions throughout and beyond the country. So before starting actual session, it is our request to our dear participants for, uh, uh, I request our dear participants few instructions like, please mute your audio and put off your video during the lecture. Please don't share your screen um, during the lecture session. Please submit your feedback after the end of the lecture. A separate feedback link will be provided in the chat box at the end of the lecture. Please do not interrupt the speaker during the lecture. Type your question in the chat box. It will be attended at the end of, um, during the question answer session. If you face any problem, please write in the chat box. We will take care of it. So thank you for your patience hearing. Without further delay, I would like to request um, uh, Mr. Anwar Hussain, Assistant Professor of English, Nagar College, Mushidabad, who is also one of our base members to introduce and welcome our esteemed speaker and chair of today's session. So thank you all once again. Anwar sir, over to you. Thank you, Professor Nargis Ahmed. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Bengal Academia for Social Empowerment, first of all, I welcome Dr. Pritesh Chakravarti, the esteemed speaker of this evening. All the students and scholars who have joined BASE lecture series, online lecture number 49, are also welcome. We are extremely pleased to have among us Dr. Chakravarti, Assistant Professor of English at Acharya Shukumar Shen Mahavidyalaya, West Bengal. He is also a former Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Assistant in New York University. Dr. Chakravarti obtained his PhD degree from the West Bengal State University and MPhil degree from the University of Calcutta. His area of research is superhero comic books of Batman and he is also interested in creative writing. He published academic articles in, in scholarly journals and attended quite a number of seminars and conferences, both national and international. And as a friend of mine, particularly during the, during the MPhil days at College State Campus, I have known him as a dedicated scholar and a very good human being. Today, Dr. Chakravarti's topic of discussion is 
constructing deconstruction the basics we are also privileged to have the chairperson of this session dr musal hussain who is presently an assistant professor and the head at the department of english kavi nozrul college dr hussain was awarded mphil and phd from anna Mal malai university and he has written the book we considering the subaltern in three plays of mahesh dattani published by express india he has also to his credit several book chapters research articles essays and poems published in national and international journals dr hussain contributed to translation of kazi nazrul islam's ogni bina into english and nepali a project of kazi nazrul university he is also a content writer for ugc e pashala welcome dr hussain and thanks a lot to both dr pritesh chakraborty and dr musaf hussain for being with us here for this evening program of base over to you dr hussain thank you uh, mr anmar hussain thank you nargis madam and all the participants the organizing um uh, base and all the dignitaries of base i'm uh, i'm really it's a proud to be a part of base and it's also a proud for me to chair this session uh, this is the 49th lecture there are so many lectures already happen on different issues uh, relevant uh, uh, relevant to the time in this particular time today the topic is constructing deconstruction so paradoxical of course maybe uh, that title but it's really uh, relevant and uh, you all uh, have to had uh, had uh, we all had uh, to do with all this topic deconstruction and derida and all these things but why relevant this is why relevant now at this moment uh the construction that will be uh, discussed from different perspective from different ways it's how it, uh, genealogical uh, factors how it came to be how it is Uh, you know that will uh, characteristics and everything. Professor um, Dr. Pitesh Chakraborty will deal with with all these things. But uh, what I would like to mention here is that we are living in a world of post truth. We are living in a world of half truth, and we are living in a world of infodemic. so at this situation lots of it, just one perspective i'd like to mention here that lots of information are there lot of statements are being made but what is said this is important but at the same time what is not said that is also important so we have to analyze all these things we have to deconstruct our life we have to de deconstruct the world around us so this is very relevant for all of us at this moment particularly when we are being bombarded by lots of information and statements um, from everywhere so uh, it's it can be a strategy uh, to analyze yes it is um, you know uh, in the in the academic perspective in academic world it is you know um, a, a kind of strategy maybe a kind of strategy to analyze a literary or philosophical text 
But in our life also, deconstruction is important. We can apply this deconstruction in every stage of our life also. So I'm not um, lengthening that. Uh, everything will be covered, I hope, uh, by that able speaker today, Dr. Pritesh Chakraborty. So I heartily welcome Dr. Chakraborty. So over to you, Dr. Chakraborty. Please proceed with your speech. Thank you. Um, thank you so much uh, for uh, the introductions and uh, thank you also for <clears throat> Uh, making this um, relevant and, and talking about the relevance of uh, the topic, topic especially uh, in the present situations. So uh, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, as you have already been told and reminded that my name is uh, Pritesh Chakraborty and uh, I teach at uh, Acharya Shukumarshan Mohavid Dalar. And today I'm going to talk about uh, deconstruction and I'm going to talk about the basics of uh, the deconstruction. And I will request uh, Mr. Hassan to um, start the presentation. Yes. OK. Um, it's coming up. Right. So uh, that's the topic of the presentation. Um, now, <clears throat> the next, can you go to the next slide, please? OK. So I have uh, mentioned here about the possibilities of definitions. I mean, the first time I heard about deconstruction uh, i wanted to know what it is like anything else uh, that there is uh, whenever we hear something for the first time or uh, we hear a term we hear we come to know about something or someone uh, we we want to know as to what the thing is uh, in bengali we say uh, that's what i wanted to know about deconstruction unfortunately it is it could neither be applied it as an oil on the hair, neither can it be eaten, uh, unfortunately. But I have tried to understand what it is in my uh, trist with in my engagement with this word since I was in uh, my master's, uh, that what this term actually is. Uh, now, whenever I, I thought I understood what it meant, uh, something else happened and some other information, some other definition came up. As um, Hussein sir was telling us that we are also in the age of uh, infodemic, like there's a deluge of uh, information that is not allowing us to focus on the real uh, thing. If there is something called the real thing, something called uh, by, by real thing, what, what we can try to mean is truth. Now, deconstruction, as uh, we can see, I'm trying to, uh, you know, tell us about the possibility of a, a, a meaning. Now, this term, this uh, the first slide and the first point of the first slide is taken from uh, Harold Pinter. This has been said by Harold Pinter. And I believe that one of the definitions of deconstruction includes this as well. And this is the, the weasel under the cocktail cabinet. Now, I know uh, when I, when I uh, ask this question to the audience, the audience won't be able to answer because they have been muted uh, significantly in, I mean, talking about uh, speech uh, freedom, talking about uh, epidemic, topic, talking about uh, the pandemic situation. We have all been kind of muted and isolated. So the audience will not be able to answer back, not yet. Uh, but if I, I mean, my, my way of uh, interacting with my uh, fellow learners had always been questioning, always been interrogating. Uh, so again, this, if I can't follow this line of uh, thought here, because it is just me who would be, you know, blabbering about whatever I have learned. So somebody asked uh, uh, Pinter as to what his plays meant. And he said that, you know, the weasel under the cocktail cabinet. Somebody took it to be a densely, a profoundly philosophical uh, term, a, a kind of a huge definition that has been given by a huge writer. But it actually meant nothing. Similarly, uh, in his exchange with uh, letters with a Japanese friend, uh, Derrida had also been asked this question that as to what is deconstruction? And he gave a very cryptic answer. 
But before going into that cryptic answer, let us try to understand a few more definitions of uh, uh, deconstruction. And mind you, this is the basics. These are the basics. I am not. I'm. I'm not qualified to, and I'm not going into the details of. Uh, deconstruction. I mean, trust me, I have tr I have been trying to read off grammatology for like the sixth time now, and I have been able to just understand a few terms, a few things. It does not mean that the text is profound in itself. It does not mean that, well, it can mean that I'm stupid, but uh, it does not really mean that the text is not decipherable. And we will come to uh, that at the end of the presentation when we will try to deconstruct deconstruction as to as to uh, as to uh, take away the aura of intellectual eliticism that has uh, surrounded uh, deconstruction uh, and we will try to make it as simple as possible but now let's try to understand let's try to wrestle with with the, with the idea as to what deconstruction is now according to derrida himself and according to uh, the letter that he wrote to his uh, japanese uh, friend this is what he wrote exactly in the letter. He writes, uh, deconstruction, action of deconstructing, a grammatical term, disarranging the construction of words in a sentence. Of deconstruction, common way of saying construction. Deconstruere, that means to de-dissemble the parts of a whole, to deconstruct a machine, to transport it elsewhere. Again, as a grammatical term, to deconstruct words, rendering it by the suppression of meter similar to prose. Say deconstruere to deconstruct itself to mean it means to lose its construction. Now, modern scholarship has shown us that in a region of the timeless East, a language reaching its own state of perfection is deconstructed and altered from within itself according to the single law of change natural to the human mind. Now, these are the things that Derrida wrote to his friend when he was trying to make him understand as to what deconstruction can be. So deconstruction as a term has been taken, has been appropriated, has been uh, smuggled into philosophy or smuggled into theory from a term of mechanics that is to 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 dissemble the parts of a whole to to take to to br break up a bigger machine and convey the parts transport the parts of those machines somewhere else to create something else now let's come to the next and less lengthier uh, definition and deconstruction is not a method and cannot be transformed into one if anybody had thought that deconstruction is a method then uh, derrida disappointed that person and said that no deconstruction is not a method and it cannot be transformed into one but then earlier uh, the 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 dictionary the denotative meaning of deconstruction included that a larger machine can be broken up, can be disassembled, and then carried, and then uh, fit into other parts or something like that. So then there should be a method to that. Now, when you want to deconstruct something, when you, when you, when you want to take apart something, there must be a method. Now, if I ask you, like uh, wh whoever is listening and seeing this, if I ask you, if I uh, make a wild request, why don't you uh, take apart your mobile? and see what's inside it. What will you do? Of course, you will think that I'm crazy, which I am a little bit. Um, but the thing is that th there is a method. You will like uh, push a pin like thing in the, in the slot. The card will come out or the SIM card will come out. You will try to remove the back cover of the phone and then you will try to remove the uh, battery or something. You know, the, there is a process to that one step one this step two this and step two uh, step three that so when you want to disassemble as opposite to assemble you want to dis disassemble something then you need to follow a method but derrida frustrates us by saying that no 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 deconstruction can't be a method it cannot be transformed into a one so from the very beginning he creates a kind of a conflict he creates a kind of a 
paradoxical relationship which reflects the title that i gave of this lecture as well constructing deconstruction which is well nigh impossible especially for small people like me but derrida himself was of the view that th this this the definition on one hand wanted to create something whereas his own observation of deconstruction says quite the opposite of it let's proceed a bit if you are if you have not already become very confused let's uh, proceed a bit further and try to uh, confuse ourselves more it must also be made clear that deconstruction is not even an act or an operation now all these things have been said by uh, derida himself and i am like quoting him without uh, using the uh, single quotes uh but th these things have been said by derida himself these are not my words or any other critics uh, words now to interrupt the uh, definition uh, method uh you might ask me later that uh, is deconstruction only about derida no but uh he is one of the pioneers of deconstruction so let's pay him a little bit of respect at least so okay so um now it it must be clear that deconstruction is not even an act or an operation so deconstruction is not an act it's not an operation it's not a method it cannot be transformed into a one deconstruction takes place out of its own as if it is an event that does not wait the deliberation consciousness or organization of a subject or even of modernity so let's try to wrap wrap our heads around this deconstruction takes place and as if out of its own volition it's uh yeah sorry for that uh, no did something happen okay no all right so uh um, deconstruction as if takes place of its own volition as if it has a life of its own a mind of its own it's an event that does not wait deliberation so is it random is it something that happens randomly is there no method to this madness let's see let's proceed and see it does not wait for consciousness so it is it, it is kind of a pre conscious thing that is happening it's it's already happening when we are think when we think that it is happening so it's already like pre conscious or maybe post conscious or unconscious or the organization of a subject now the term subject itself has been problematized by the entire post structural narrative i mean of course you already uh, i i hope you already know that deconstruction falls under the rubric uh, falls under the umbrella theory of uh, post structuralism there is a is what uh, deconstruction is one of the uh, uh, dialogues uh, of um, post structuralism so the, the 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 idea of subject itself is very problematic in the post structural uh, dialectics uh, the post structural narrative that the, the the subject is not a simple subject but if we take the subject to be a simple subject even then this subject cannot organize deconstruction or even of modernity so modernity which is avant-garde which thinks beyond its time it cannot predict deconstruction it cannot predict the way deconstruction works now this definition seems to be a little uh, longer and so uh, it continues to the next slide and uh, i would request the presenter to go to the next slide okay already there uh, my system seems to be a little slower okay there you go now this is the eccentric definition that uh, derida gives to his friend when Uh, his friend asks him the question that okay so you go about saying deconstruction is that deconstruction is this what is deconstruction now he answers all sentences of the type deconstruction is x or deconstruction is not x a priori miss the point which is to say that they are at least false so deconstruction is something or deconstruction is not something are both false then what is deconstruction 
how can we put a finger on uh, deconstruction if we can put a finger on deconstruction we will come to that as you know one of the principal things at stake in what you, what is called in my texts deconstruction and this is again uh, derrida's own words is precisely the delimiting of ontology and above all of the third person present indicative s is p now this is beyond me i can't make any sense of what the last sen sentence talks about s is p what is that like what what does he even try to say by that okay i know ontology i know delimiting i know third person present indicative but what the final outcome of the definition is that s is p what does that mean even let's let's hold on i mean since we are going to discuss an important term called uh, difference i don't know if i can pronounce it properly uh, therefore difference means delay deferment of the so called or the so sort meaning of anything so i am also um, trying to defer i am trying to delay the meaning of uh, deconstruction if there is any now again derrida himself says what deconstruction is not everything of course so deconstruction is everything according to derrida what is deconstruction nothing of course very frustrating answers by uh, derida himself about uh, deconstruction but let's move away from what derida himself tried to talk about deconstruction and try to go into deconstruction from the perspective of a student from the perspective of a learner from the perspective of maybe a participant in the process of deconstruction now this term uh deconstruction according to derrida again he has adopted this term from the heideggerian concept of abu or aba that's how the, the pronunciation uh, uh, was uh, on the internet but i'm not sure i was trying to pronounce it as abau or something like that this abo or something so it means destruction but destruction with the k in instead of the c um and according to many critics according to many writers who came after uh, derida tried to clarify that destruction does not mean the actual destruction the actual annihilation of anything so what is then uh, deconstruction if we go into the uh, next slide but before going into the next slide uh, yeah you, you can keep this slide on you can uh, have a read of it especially i want to focus uh, your attention on the uh, i am a little dyslexic right corner okay so um look at that picture for a while for a while and uh, then you can come back to the to your screens to read whatever is Uh, given over here i will go into this uh but let us try to understand in layman terms if 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 we can be done at all if lay, if 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 we can say that deconstruction is for layman why not then i can say it's my way of uh, trying to make my students understand uh, that what deconstruction is according to me deconstruction is not a method it cannot be transformed into one it it is uh, not uh, many things but what i can say or what i believe deconstruction is is a reading it's a reading it's a way of reading as all theories are i hope i make more sense now all theories are according to me points of views all theories according to me are ways to look at things and since i am a student of literature uh, i am more interested in literary theories like theories which help us god forbid they help us they help us in trying to elicit the hidden meanings of um of the of, of the text in front of us <clears throat> 
deconstruction if it is useful at all <clears throat> tries to do something similar and we will come to the function of uh, uh, deconstruction a bit later but deconstruction reads a text through what now let's come to the chief features and then we will go one by one deconstructing the meaning of deconstruction trying to create opportunities where we can fix the 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 jelly of the theory on the ceiling yeah that's my uh, favorite uh, uh, metaphor for explaining theory you have to like throw the jelly on the ceiling and then you have to throw a nail and then you have to like stick the jelly on the on the on the ceiling don't try it at home i know your mother will be very angry about the missing jelly so <clears throat> So the, the first thing is about deconstruction is that it looks deeply into language. I was telling you about that deconstruction is a way of looking at things like structuralism is, like psychoanalysis is, like, uh, like feminism is, like uh, new criticism is. It is a way of looking at things, looks deeply into language. Language of what? Language of the text in front of you. Now, language could be any language, like uh, it could be, uh, let's start from the more naive things. The language could be the written language, like English, Bengali, Hindi, or the language could be visual language. No matter what the kind of language is, deconstruction looks deeply into the language and tries to understand what tries to understand, sorry, tries to understand the next point, tries to destabilize established hierarchies. Somebody uh, asked me this question that is deconstruction uh, against uh, uh, any kind of uh, tradition? Well, yes, if you understand language to be a tradition, then deconstruction is definitely a stance against this kind of tradition. So looks deeply into the language to do what? To destabilize established hierarchies. How? We will do that later, but we will uh, keep these things in mind and try to go into the practice of deconstruction a bit later. It also believes that the seeds of the destruction of an idea lies within itself. So any idea that falls into the whirlwind of deconstruction is not analyzed, is not uh, understood, is not interpreted, is not destroyed by the whirlwind. But the seeds of the destruction of the idea lies very much within itself. For example, um, I read it in an uh, article somewhere that um, the moment we start to breathe, the moment our cells starts to get oxidized and our cells oxidize and we die. So if we never had taken birth, we would never had, we, we would never die. So birth is the beginning of death and vice versa also, I mean, not going into nihilism, but death is also, death also leads to uh, birth. Say, imagine the falling of the leaves from the trees, making manure for the other uh, trees to come up. So that's a kind of a cyclical movement. That, that's why I, I uh, try to give a very awkward looking, uh, but a kind of a, a image in the PPT itself, which is a, which, which signifies circularity. So, the idea is contains the, the 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 areas of destruction, the possibilities of destruction within itself. Now, deconstruction makes a very important point. Deconstruction says that there is no center, and hence there is no truth. And if there is any truth, then it cannot be reached by the method by the medium of language. So first of all, there is no truth according to deconstruction, but if there is any truth, 
then it cannot be reached by the medium through which we usually try to reach to the truth. Now, all of you uh, who are listening to this uh, lecture have come here to understand deconstruction. Like you have some uh, uh, interest in deconstruction. You, you want to know more about deconstruction or uh, you want to learn about deconstruction. Deconstruction initially is a word and I am using words in order to explain another word. You see, the futility of this exercise comes up very uh, easily. I am using words to explain other words with the help of other words, which actually means words. And we are going in a kind of a circle, just like this snake is trying to eat its own tail. Um, so we can't reach there with the language, whatever kind of language we are speaking about here. Language does not warrant only the written thing. The My body language, the gestures that I am making, my background is also a language. Anything that communicates with you might be in itself a kind of language. And Derrida is dismissive of this whole system of language and says that it is not possible for us to reach the truth if there is any truth truth god uh, whether uh, uh, whether um, um, riya did kill shushant uh, sharma uh, uh, shushant rajput sorry not Sh sharma uh, these are truths these are facts and derida might say that you know whatever information you are getting from wherever sources is actually not sufficient for you to reach there it has far reaching uh, implications it has it has deep implications in what we are going to uh, do with the rest of the uh, presentation and with the rest of our lives in fact now <clears throat> So one word only leads to another in an endless loop. If you have seen the web series dark, so it's like an endless loop. You are just going on in rounds and rounds and you can never reach the point that you want to reach. Now, I usually start my classes of deconstruction by saying that, okay, tell me, um, tell me the meaning of the word like um, a car, C-A-R, car. So people would say, okay, this is an automobile and this uses, uh, this is, uh, this has a steering and this has like four wheels. And then I say, what is automobile? And they would say that, okay, automobile is something that, uh, um, you know, functions on its own. It does not require somebody pushing it. Uh, it is automatic and it is mobile. It is, uh, it moves. And then I say, okay, what is mobile? And then say anything that moves is mobile. And then say, I, I ask, what is move? And it goes on and on and on. I mean, the class doesn't end like that, uh, trust me, because if, I, if it had been like that, people would have had stopped uh, attending my classes. Uh, well, so what I'm trying to arrive at is what we are trying to use in order to explain a concept are other concepts. And hence, the, the idea, and I have like, uh, you know, this is my brand of humor, bear with me. And I have uh, mentioned here that there is nothing outside the PPT. <laughs> well, uh, so the actual thing, and the misrepresented thing, actually, the most quoted and the most misquoted word or, or phrase of deconstruction is, there is nothing outside the text. Well, that is a misquote, actually. Derrida did not say that there is nothing outside the text. Derrida actually wanted to say there is no outside text. Outside text. What does what did he even mean by that? I believe he meant that if you want to reach to a meaning, to a particular meaning, you cannot have a an outside referent like uh, let's let's try to understand it by an example mm. 
okay uh say you um after this lockdown is over and i hope it gets over soon you go to a, a relative's house uh especially if that relative owes you money uh, no jokes apart you just go to a relative's house and after 6 months time perhaps the relative does not remember your voice and you knock on the door and uh, the relative says who is there and you say it's me the relative might think or he might have realized he or she might have realized that this is you and you uh, and he owes you money and you you are there for his money then he would say who is me and then you would say that uh, you know i am uh, so and so uh, i am uh, pritesh i am uh, ravi i am uh, hasan i am someone and then that person would say who pritesh and then i would try to make my relationship with this person that you know i am your bon po boner bonji jamai things like that uh, if people do not understand that then uh, you can you know inbox me and i'll try to explain what that really meant i mean i was i was trying to establish a relationship then this person would say that oh no uh, then that person is someone different because i have a nickname as well i mean i am not known in my family circles as pritesh uh that's a different name that they use and then they would say you are not then that relative would say you are not the same person so if there are no cameras to make me see who i am even that could be very misleading because within this lockdown period we have all fattened up and uh, our faces have swollen into a balloon or something and that relative will say that no i don't know you in that situation you cannot produce your aadhar card you cannot produce your uh, passport you cannot produce any uh, act any any proof of identification that it is really you derida also said that why is it so that if it is written in a book then it must be true for example uh, i am sure all of us have been through this uh, when the trains were running and if there was A, an empty seat somewhere we would rush to get it and there would be a competitor and then he would uh, he or she would uh, beat us to that seat and we would say hey it, that was my seat and that person would say apnar ki naam lekha ache naki derida would have had said naam lekha ache tateo ki so the thing is that there is nothing outside of the text that can provide you with some kind of a meaning uh, you cannot bring your dead grandfather to prove that you are really your dead grandfather's grandson or granddaughter so it is also anti structuralist so answering to the question that somebody asked me <clears throat> earlier uh, is that yes it is anti structuralist it does not believe that structures can give you meaning so it is basically a reaction to structuralism which all post structuralist school of thought basically is that it is an answer it is a reaction to structuralism that no you cannot have a sentence and it can give you meaning because even uh, uh, sasur even the structuralists were of the view that language is arbitrary language cannot give you a sense of wholesome meaning and th- everything exists in a kind of a binary uh, opposite derida went a step further and said that it's not just even binaries everything exists in relationship to a number of other things and it is very difficult in order to make sense of all these uh, number of uh, other things now let's come to the next slide and i am talking about the chief tokens see uh, if you did not get what deconstruction is which i too have not got actually i mean if somebody asks me okay you are a big you you consider yourself to be big on deconstruction you are an assistant professor and tell me what deconstruction is i would just stare blankly at that person's face and i will smile uh, you know my stupid smile and i would say excuse me please and i will like you know go away from that place but jokes apart i say this even to the other students i i heard um uh, uh, nadia madam uh, say that it's also this this lecture addresses somewhere some students who 
who are uh, sitting for the competitive exams. So I was like discussing this with the other students and I said that, see, any theory, including deconstruction, is nothing but terms. You learn the terms, you have a working knowledge of that particular theory. I'm not saying you become an expert on that, but if you understand the terms, then you have a working knowledge. You have a, you have a base, not our base, this base, but a base on which you can you know, build up further. So the first term that I wish to uh, talk about, uh, the first token of deconstruction that I want to talk, talk about is grammatology. Now, as you all might know, of grammatology is the name of the book that uh, Derrida had written. Uh, and translated uh, later by Gayatri Chakraborty Shiva. And the term grammatology has been discussed here in, in, in this uh, book uh, 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 a lot. So what is grammatology? Grammatology is actually, uh, technically speaking or denotatively speaking, grammatology is um, the, erase, the, the, the science of erasure. S-C-I-E-N-C, -E -E, Bigyan, science of erasure. And what is erasure itself? Now, that is uh, important, which is like the 12th point in the PPT, but I'll like come, uh, I'll bring it forward because what is uh, grammatology is the science of uh, erasure. Now, erasure is the process by which the hierarchies are embedded into the language. We did talk about destabilizing the hierarchies, but what are these hierarchies? Basic hierarchies include uh, male, female, uh, white, black, true, false, um, um, dark, bright, night, day, so on and so forth. These are the violent hierarchies, again using uh, Derrida's term, violent hierarchies that have been embedded into our language and as Laka had pointed out that our consciousness is built like a language so our consciousness also works much like this language and these hierarchies have been built into the language and thus been built into our consciousness itself grammatology reads the signs of the now s-i-g-n-s now the signs of erasure where wh where was the point at which this hierarchy was born? At which point did man meant brave, quote unquote? At which point did uh, female meant beautiful? At which point did black come to connotate uh, evil? Grammatology studies these things and within grammatology, a number of other terms also come. Now, uh, then there is uh, logocentrism. <clears throat> now, it was uh, developed, this term, uh, as opposed to many people who, who might tell you that it was a term coined by Derrida. I would protest and, and would say that this term, this term was actually coined by Ludwig, uh, Ludwig Kleggs in 1920s. <clears throat> Uh, why is uh, this picture here from, um, which movie is that? I'm uh, I, I, I slipping my mind. Pakiza, yes. So why is this here? And I, this is my brand of humor, bear with me. And I am trying to say, in he logo ne, so logo centrism and logo uh, ne had taken away the, the dupatta of this uh, famous actress. Replace dupatta with the freedom of signification. Replace dupatta with rigidification of meaning. Replace dupatta with the rigidification of, of terms and terminologies. The logo, according to Derrida, <clears throat> which comes from the word logos, or uh, logos itself means uh, a number of things. It means discourse. It means ideal representation, it means God, it means word, it means a number of things. And Derrida is of the view that the Western philosophical thought has always been logocentric. 
that is it has always emphasized on the fact that you can understand something through language through signs through gestures through words and derrida's derrida takes up the ancient quarrel between speech versus writing in this while he was describing this term logo uh, centrism if you uh, remember plato and socrates uh, were of the view that speech is better than writing because writing uh, contaminates memory and speech means the presence of the speaker whereas writing means the absence of the speaker so since i am here talking this is more relevant this is more important this takes a kind of a hierarchical position over what i have typed in my ppt that was the view of plato and uh, his uh, guru uh, socrates and many people have adhered to this uh, view in fact in bible itself it is written that first there was this word so the word is important even uh, in our uh, in in the hindu culture there are um, things like um, the bark the bark creates everything the 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 sound the vibration created the entire world and stuff like that derrida is fighting against this logocentrism he says that since language itself is arbitrary and insufficient for meaning therefore our idea of the world should not be logocentric it should not be based on writing mane site kar naam lekha royeche seta important noy it's not important that if it is if something is written in the bible or something is written in the constitution something is written in the book it has to be true because all our significations all our uh, myths of significations are built around this particular concept of the logos Uh, some people were of the view that logos is logos uh, is, uh, there is a possibility of an ideal representation now if there is an ideal world then there must be a possibility of an ideal representation derrida says it it is not possible there is no ideal representation it, there might be an ideal world uh, built by god or something but there th that idea that uh ideal world cannot be well represented through language because that's how we come to know about uh, ourselves now when I, when everybody else introduced me and i also introduced myself what did i use words right i mean uh, 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 who told you that i am uh, pritesh chakravarty who told you that i have a doctorate degree who told you that you know i i teach in atharva sukumar shen mahavidyalaya or wherever i mean did you ask for my like identity identity card and did you want to see my uh, degree certificate for phd well you now might uh, ask me to show my degree certificate uh, degrees to you but aren't degrees also typed neatly on a piece of paper and presented to us which we laminate and present it to the interviewers who take our interviews written printed typed spoken gestured that's it and derida says sorry guys truth cannot be attained by these kinds of things so hence anything that is a logo anything that is a representation falls short of telling you about the meaning uh if if it means something it means something uh then these might mean something very different in some other culture onomatopoeic words are also different according to according to different uh, cultures so any kind of representation has the possibility of leading you astray hence we should not stay logocentric rather we should become i don't know what centric because we have not come to that yet phonocentrism so is phonocentrism better than logocentrism uh, we can have a vote and derrida says phonocentrism is equally insufficient as logocentrism because though speech has been valorized over writing since a long time and now it's the opposite of it speech does not have the ability or the possibility to mean something on its own 
because there is nothing outside the PPT. I mean, there is nothing outside the text. Like there is no outside text. There is no point of reference beyond your present text. Then comes phallogocentrism. Now, this is a kind of a combination between logocentrism and uh, phonocentrism, and it is a term that can be used uh, with caution uh, in uh, feminist discourse. Um, Derrida was of the view that uh, as the, the word, the language, the speech uh, has come to define meaning, similarly, this meaning has been appropriated by the patriarchal society and everything has now centered around the male, the phallus. The phallus is, uh, has, has achieved a sense of importance beyond uh, measure. Because uh, as an example, the, I, I don't know if it's a joke, uh, the cricketers invented uh, the, the abdomen guard first and then the helmet. Because for them, uh, well, something else was important than the head. Allogocentrism for you, in my terms, in very layman terms. Then comes supplementarity. Okay. Um, the way the petrol prices are going up, uh, one day we have to supplement uh, the petrol with uh, maybe water. But is it possible to do that? Not with the cars, but according to uh, Derrida, this idea of supplementarity works in language. I mean, you can uh, take from a paradigm of various words, replace them, and yet somehow get the right kind of meaning. Uh, you have the ability, you have the possibility of replacing one term for another. And hence, if it can be replaced, if one term can be replaced by another, then the term itself loses its position in the hierarchy. It's not a powerful term anymore, if it can be replaced, right? So supplementarity goes a long way in destabilizing the hierarchies that we had began to deconstruct in the very beginning of the uh, of deconstruction. Suture is a small word. It's a small uh, uh, idea within uh, deconstruction. It's not very much discussed recently. But suture is important. Why? Because suture is the point both of rupture and of unition. I'll uh, try to explain it by, uh, by a single word. Cleave. C-L-E-A-V-E. -E. Cleave. Cleave means to break something apart. And cleave also means to join. Another word in this paradigm would be pharmacon. According to Derrida or at, even according to like it, the, the meaning of the word has come out like this, that it both means poison and medicine. In Phaedrus, uh, Socrates was talking about uh, the way in which uh, the god went to this uh, Egyptian king and said that, OK, I brought you a gift of writing. And the, the, the king said that, no, thanks, I don't need this writing because it will contaminate memory. So writing, speech, anything else is both a medicine and a poison. It's like love, you know, you cannot live without love, but love will not let you live for long. Um, no, I'm not, very, I'm not a cynic person, but it's just a way to make you understand. So suture is the word, is, is, the, is the area where this rupture between the hierarchies begin. This is the point at which the de already destabilized language comes into the notice of the reader. Because I already said that deconstruction is a reading. And when I will try to explain through the example of a poem as to how it can be uh, deconstructed, we will try to stop at this uh, uh, platform called uh, suture. Then comes trace. Trace is the, the thing that is left after the, sorry, after the erasure is done. Trace is like the clue that you leave after you commit a murder. It leads to something. Uh, when we try to silence, when we try to mute, not in this presentation, but in general, when we try to silence, when we try to mute something, 
we leave a trace when we position something over something males over females we try to suppress we try to repress the idea of femininity uh, by uh, toppling it with uh, masculinity we try to do with white and black and things like that this process this movement leaves a trace which can be followed to the beginning or possible beginning of that making of the violent hierarchy and this can lead to the suture and this can lead to the dismantling of this violent hierarchy that has been created um for example if we take the term female and male some people might say okay uh, the female was a, a a a prefix a fe was a prefix that was added to uh, the male i once jocularly like asked somebody that you know fe can also mean iron so uh, like uh, females are iron males and they have the real iron they have the real strength and males do not so well, that, that's just a play with the words okay so but then if the, the trace between female and male can lead to more serious destabilizations of these terms and after all these are all terms and whenever you use a term you force out something else this forcing out this dragging out leaves a mark of signification of meaning which is called trace and it can be led to the other word in fact trace makes us try to understand deconstruction very clearly is that the more you try to hide something the more it is visible uh, when i was losing my hair rapidly i'm still losing it uh, i was trying to like cover my hair as much as possible with whatever hair uh, whatever uh, hair i had left i was trying to cover my baldness the more i tried to do that uh, the more my bald headed uh, truth came out and uh, people would make more fun of it so what i decided that no you just this see that i'm bald i don't care anymore i'm bald okay fine make fun of it uh, so trace is something that tells you that something has been removed and the more you try to hide the more you try to uh, remove something from the eyes of some person the more it becomes clear i am trying to close the door behind me so that uh, nobody comes up upon me or nobody like disturbs me but you can see that the door is closed and there could be many things that can lie beyond the door i am not completely honest with you there might be a dead body who knows no there is no dead body please don't send police over here so trace is like that trace is the proof that you are hiding something and curiosity curious people intelligent people will go after it and will try to dig that uh, the the thing that you have been trying to hide another term is bricolure now bricolure is associated with supplementarity bricolure is a word that can be used anywhere and it's a kind of a, 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 a no all a kind of a jack of all trades kind of a thing it can be it can be fit anywhere and can be used according to the language according to the tradition according to the culture through which it is uh, used okay so uh, like uh, my t-shirt can become um, a pocha of the house uh, later and well that is irreversible but you know uh, that, that that can be a, a bricoluring thing then comes difference I, i don't know i i i pronounce it as difference it can be it can have very different pronunciation i i don't know anything about france french so this difference has been uh, very simply uh, understood as a sign under erasure following from trace difference is the process by which the the presentation of meaning the the delivery of meaning is delayed it 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 unites these two words different and deferment into difference which means that whatever whenever you try to go for the meaning of a term of a concept including deconstruction 
it will be forever you will be forever delayed it's like going to uh, I, I i hope there are no sbi uh, people sbi officials here sorry for that it's just a joke uh, if you go to a sbi uh, counter and this sbi counter would say yahan pe nahi wahan par this this is not the counter where, where your 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 thing is done you need to go to that counter and then the other counter would say no it's like on counter 16 and then you go to counter 16 and you say and you see that uh, there is no one in the counter and you wait for 2 hours only to learn that counter 16 is not going to do your job but you need to go and see the manager and the manager is having a fight with the deputy manager so that is what difference is you will never reach the meaning you will always be delayed and delayed and delayed then comes aporia aporia is this gap the lacuna between what you are trying to say and what words come out of your mouth and how they are received by the people who are listening to you and how they are understanding it so many gaps i am thinking okay i will try to do this i'll try to explain deconstruction in this way i'll try to be humorous and witty and stuff like that i don't know what words are coming out of my mind because i am not conscious directly about the words that i am using something wrong might come out um and you might hear something else and you might understand something else so within these uh this this bridge of significations there are gaps and your uh, little uh, uh, car of a uh, uh, process of meaning can take a dive any time between these gaps aporia is that now aporia exists already in the language in the meaning in the in the significations of every text that you read and it's a good thing according to uh, derida <clears throat> that it allows you to go into the, the the possibilities of these stabilizations sorry it sorry again it goes into the possibility of making something break open deconstruct okay then there is another term archi writing now here derida becomes more uh, understandable here derida becomes more empathetic towards the students of deconstruction and he says clearly that archi writing is the pre form of writing now whatever you are writing whatever you are seeing whatever you are feeling whatever you are thinking is already there you are just giving it a manifest form it's like a phoneme it's like it's like a, a, a representation of a letter like a is a letter and you can write it in any way uh, uh, you uh, might want to so archi writing is the kind of writing is the kind of signification that already exists and if somehow we can tap into that unconscious and already existing uh writing already existing uh, meaning then we might have a semblance of meaning we might have something to hold on to but then archi writing is something that is difficult to reach erasure we have already talked about erasure then comes and unlucky 13 is metaphysics of absence big term and uh, i hope you are all scared no i was scared when i when i heard this uri baba metaphysics of absence uri baba ki hai well it simply means that it is the opposite of what the uh, the the general uh, school of uh, western thought uh, had been talking about they were saying that whatever is present whatever is now is meaningful and is there like whatever is is whatever can be seen whatever can be felt whatever can be experienced is true now this tries to answer to another question posed by a person that is what is the relationship between uh, deconstruction and uh, empiricism if i stretch it a bit what is the what is the relationship between phenomenology and uh, uh, deconstruction well completely antithetical <clears throat> phenomenology or um uh, uh, existentialism or uh, uh, essentialism 
or empiricism believes that if you can touch and feel and you can read and you can understand something only then that thing exists otherwise things don't exist in vacuum but following somewhat the eastern schools of uh, philosophy uh, derrida was of the view that no everything that can be seen touched felt read seen somehow experienced somehow felt only those things are true there is no guarantee to that things which are absent can also be true things which are not there were not there will not be there are also true because darkness is as true as light is because space is also something because emptiness is also something as opposed to solid things so everything is it does not matter if it is here right now like um, explaining the uh, the metaphysics of presence it's like this <clears throat> if you have a baby at home if you have a uh, uh, like a like a 1 year old 6 month year old 6 month old 1 uh, year old uh, baby if you go away from the sight of that baby and do not make a sound that baby would cry thinking that you are dead you are gone because it cannot see you western schools of philosophies believed in similar things if you cannot if you cannot see it if you cannot eat it if you cannot uh, like i am audible i am visible thing then you are not there but according to derrida even if you are not there you are somewhere and your your manifestation might happen at some other time it's like you know you have read uh, <clears throat> what you have read uh, some short story when you were young and then when you are teaching it in the classroom the the meaning completely changes where did it come from it did not exist earlier it's now there so that's the metaphysics of absence now if we can go to the next slide please okay <clears throat> now these are uh, some of the seminal texts i will not read them out you can uh, have a, a reading of them and it's available in google uh, just type these things and you will get most of them as pdf forms because these books are really old uh, 76 uh, 786 things like that and i have included them only to mean that this is the seminal text if you want to go to the origin With, I mean, I mean, this is blasphemy against deconstruction. But if you want to go to the real stuff, then these are the the places where you can find uh, the 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 reference to whatever uh, deconstruction was all about. And it is, of course, very essential for uh, the net students, the net aspirants. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Okay. Now these, uh, okay, these are the fathers and mothers. my god binaries of deconstruction uh, i will not tell you who these people are and you can you, you have a minute to identify these people uh, and uh, you can discuss it with anybody who is present with you right now uh, or you can discuss it with yourself uh, well uh, you can have a look at these guys and these uh, people were the people who kind of started it all and if you look beyond uh, the the photographs you might observe there is a, there is a trace of a picture <clears throat> this trace is of yale school um yale university because it is here in yale that it all began deconstruction as a theory as a philosophy um was kind of developed in america not the french version but the english version the american version uh, was developed here in uh, uh, yale um okay i will leave you with a tease i will not mention who these guys are you can take a screenshot and try to find them out on your own search for some truth guys okay now let's go to the application part now this is going to be interesting <clears throat> now if you can read out the text not the triumph of life because uh, why have i included triumph of life because triumph of life uh, was the text by shelley which was a seminal text which was like dissected by the by the deconstructionists i will use something more similar in my uh, presentation 
Now, so uh, 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 the, the, the application of literature, I mean, how can deconstruction be applied in literature? What is applied deconstruction? Let us try to see that. And this has been uh, taken from the, the, uh, the preface that Spivak had uh, written in the translation. Okay, to locate the promising marginal text, to disclose the undecidable moment, to pry it loose with the positive lever of signifier, to reverse the resident hierarchy, only to displace it, to dismantle in order to reconstitute what is already inscribed, deconstruction in a nutshell, applause. Really applause. I mean, <laughs> deconstruction in a nutshell. Wow. So this is what deconstruction is really about. Or is it? Well, this is something that you guys, like the people who are eager to learn about it, including me, might hold on to. Like to locate the promising marginal text. So there are texts within texts. There are various layers of significations, various layers of meanings within a single text. You can read one signification at a time. There could be thousands of others hidden, subtly hidden within the between the lines. We have been talking about reading between the lines for some time now. And so these significations, these marginal texts are hidden within these lines and you have to disclose them. Disclose what the undecidable moment. <clears throat> when somebody speaks on something with some kind of an authority, he or she does not want that authority to be challenged because it will defeat the very purpose of the entire uh, exercise and thank god uh, all of you are like so mute and i'm not looking at the messages right now uh, and hence whatever i am saying i have to i i can say without uh, uh, much uh, interruptions but when a text is released when a text when you receive a text from another end you have a lot of time to go through it if you are if you are really bored and if you if you really want to listen to this lecture once again i don't know yeah it's getting recorded so it will be available somewhere you will have so many moments where i was undecided as to what to say how to say what should i say <clears throat> and those are the moments which can be used to pry it loose with what with the positive lever of the signifier the word the very word which was used to define it, defend it, can be used to destroy it. Words themselves can create a, an idea and those very words can reverse the very idea that was born with the help of the words. To reverse the resident hierarchy. I have already talked about these hierarchies a number of times. So what does this hierarchy, what would, what would, what do we do with this prying open with the positive signifier? We dismantle the hierarchy. We dismantle the resident hierarchy that is there in the text. If a text prioritizes, uh, uh, um, say, uh, PUBG ban over uh, uh, suicides due to coronavirus, then uh, that is a kind of a, a hierarchy that deconstruction might help us to pry loose only to displace it now is it is is deconstruction something is this method something that can really help us to really deconstruct really destabilize um everything that is going wrong with the world derrida says no you can displace it, but not forever. It will come back. The empire strikes back, you know, that kind of thing. So you can displace it for a while. You can not talk about uh, <clears throat> uh, what uh, uh, um, uh, Ria Chakraborty for a, for a moment 
and you can concentrate more about the the economic loss of our uh, of our country but there you go even in my lecture i am thinking somewhere unconsciously about riya chakraborty as the entire society is obsessed about it so am i but i don't want to talk about it and still i am this is the moment of undecidability this is the moment where you pry loose the discourse this is where you undo the discourse in order to displace it but not forever to dismantle in order to reconstitute reconstitute in a better manner maybe 5 years down the line when i will be listening listening to my lecture i would think oh my god what have i done and i would try to reconstitute it i will try to make it better <clears throat> but only when i can find the the spaces where i can you know make my suture make my entrance into the text already something that is already inscribed so things as i said archi writing is already there in your mind and you are just using uh, the 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 parole of the lang or you you are using only a performance from the entire plethora of possibilities and that was uh, said by um, steva um no uh, we will not go to the next slide and we will concentrate here now i will try to use deconstruction with the very first two with, with two points the first poem is canonization which is quite a, a commonly known uh, poem i think all of you might have heard of canonization or have read it now canonization prioritizes public pri uh, private life of the lovers over the public life right i mean that's what canonization is about that they are lovers and they do not need uh, any outside intervention they do not need uh, the world to validate them they are a world in themselves they are like two hemispheres who can join into a sphere though that was taken from good morrow but that's the line of thought right that is the dominant idea of canonization and some day they would be canonized as saints because they have created their own world because they are private and they are different from the public but he seems to be talking more about the public than about the private he seems to be obsessing about how the public is diminutive public is this public is that public is this and 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 the private is good the private is best the private is but in his effort to demonize or in his effort to deflate the public life which is a hierarchy in the poem he talks more about public than about private let's take another example uh, of from uh, of course shakespeare Uh, shall i compare thee to a summer's day the moment of undecidability is already upon us shall i compare thee to a summer's day if we just take this statement i mean he is undecided shakespeare can't make up his mind should he should he not that's a moment of undecidability itself and then if you read the entire poem <clears throat> what you will find is that rather than talking about the beauty of the friend he is more concerned about the things that can destroy his beauty so the fear of destruction is working upon the mind of the poet and yet he says that as long as men can breathe and eyes can see this lives give, this gives life to this uh, this gives life to the whatever i, I forgot the line so this the the lines he's so confident about the lines that can give life to d as long as men can breathe and eyes can see the couplet is a kind of a cover up like a quick cover up like uh, okay i i i have been talking about death and destruction and whatever is wrong with the world and whatever my friend can be destroyed with but at the end you know everything will be all right because my verse is more powerful than the universe and Uh, you know uh, if, if, if whenever people will read about it people will remember uh, the, the 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 person unfortunately the person's name wasn't really clear initially to me or to the first readers of the poem the the sonnet so that is what happens when you apply deconstruction on the text you can use this any on any text and you might come up with similar examples novels say for example if you take up uh, uh, 
a novel that demonizes or stereotypes say uh, female or or uh, the indians or any any uh, other person as opposed to some uh, other idea or other eurocentric view then it seems that this person this novel writer is obsessing about that particular word for example in 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 uh, heart of darkness black this black that black 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 dark he is filling our mind unconsciously unwittingly with the very word that can be associated with evil unconsciously but those are the points through which we can enter into the text and question the hierarchies present in the text okay so uh like coming towards the end oh, sorry not uh look okay can we come to the next slide please okay now i would not uh, like go into uh, a, a full blown explanation as to how these applications can be done in other mediums including teaching but uh, you can use the very terms you can use the very ideas <clears throat> in these uh, forms of looking at things and get similar examples of course the very idea uh 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 you know feminism is against uh, patriarchy which is itself deconstructible but let's for the sake of argument uh, find that one of the major arguments of feminism is that it stands against patriarchal oppression now one of the main modes of patriarchal oppression has been fueled by the scriptures i'm talking about the indian society or, or even bible like you know um, that um, god is a he and the son of god there was no daughter of god and 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 uh, eve ate the apple uh, and and uh, adam did not eat, eat the apple so all these things if if you if if a naive feminist if a naive person asks this question to the patriarchal authority that where is it why do you say that that we are weak and you are strong and we are uh, um, we are uh, less intelligent and you are more intelligent they will ultimately point you to two things if they are not your parents then they will tell you that it's written in the scriptures shastro mein likha hai uh or if you have the parents the parents would say wasn't i who gave birth to you so don't you argue with me well jokes apart but this very idea that it has been written somewhere can be destabilized by reading up that particular text and trying to find those points of undecidability those points of those areas where you can pull apart the very uh, uh structure of the text itself <clears throat> dalit discourse of course uh, somebody is better than someone somebody is more intelligent than someone these kinds of things again are written where in the scriptures and what are scriptures but bunch of words and what can be done to bunch of words by other words they can be deconstructed and then they can be reconstructed law <clears throat> if you go to any uh, court and if you go to like uh, the discourse of law you will find deconstruction happening all the time using the very words of a witness against that witness to make that witness lose his or her validity in teaching it is interesting that it could try to answer as to where to begin and i have tried to apply it in my own teaching methods uh, the very first and very naively i had thought when i had gotten into this vocation when i had gotten into this profession that um, teachers were like particularly serious they were not really very you know humorous and they were not making any slippages and they were they were perfect i thought of why not go for complete imperfection why not go for uh, a, a, you know a kind of a humorous a kind of a jocular approach and did it work i don't know i mean sometimes it seems to work sometimes it backfires but yes <clears throat> in the teaching while you are using this in the pedagogy carefully then you must understand you must try to explain to the students that as to what are the slippages of this pedagogy what are the points through which you can uh, explain something 
what are the various ways in which you can receive the text and talk to talk back to the text you you do not have to consider the text to be the text there can be texts within the text there can be meanings that can emanate uh, 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 like springs from uh, from from the fountains <clears throat> so that's a possible way of uh, uh, using um, deconstruction in in uh, the pedagogy like take apart the pedagogy itself and and show them where it can be undone before the students challenge you that sir or ma'am this is the way in which it can be thought in another way or thought in a very contradictory way to which you are thinking um to get the example again i often say that uh, would you really compare your uh, uh, best friend or would you really com compare your friend uh, whom you like with a summer's day like indian summer and they would be thinking for a while and they would say that no way i mean summer is like hot i mean it's not hot in that other sense but it's it's humid it's bad we will not compare our friends with the with the summer and yet we take this very statement uh as 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 a statement of validation so um i guess that's big, uh, makes me come to the end of the presentation and there's a thank you slide which uh, hasan you might show uh, yeah and if you have any like questions which are already there in the text box and i see that there are 57 i don't know if there are questions if these are questions <clears throat> so um if there are questions other than the questions that you might ask here in the inbox you can email me to this uh, address and uh, if i can answer them i will try to answer them so thank you uh, so much uh, for uh, being so patient and mute uh, <laughs> and um, if there is anything that i would uh, if there are questions i would like to um, take them one by one uh, so over to hasan now um, and uh, can i so can i like yeah can, can i like uh, off my video now or yes yes to... okay all right That so uh, so i request to audience uh, please write your uh, question on on the chat box uh, okay uh, over to uh, chair dr mosarab hussain thank you uh, hasan bhai thank you dr chakraborty so it was a, a really nice discussion very illustrative exploratory a uh, discussion i would say and um uh, is full of analogies and you know dotted with gems of an examples from uh, everyday life and um uh, he has uh, you know included uh, everything inclusive of all the aspects of deconstructions he started with uh, you know the definitions but that is quite uh, you know uh, uh he was just uh, i would rather say de deconstructing the definitions of deconstruction and then he uh, he made his deliberations on chief feature features and uh, particularly the impo uh, interesting uh, part was the chief tokens and um, that was also you know there are so many new uh, actually uh, there are so many known uh, terms that is related to deconstructions but uh, some uh, students or some young scholars they would also have the flavor of new uh, you know the discussions uh, on some new uh, terms here also which are not generally included in university or undergraduate syllabuses then he uh, also uh, made his deliberations on you know uh applications particularly applications part in literature that was very uh well discussed uh he um referred to canonizations uh, you know as, uh, and also shakespearean text and applications in the other medium also particularly in feminism dalit discourse law in teaching uh, also so it it was really enriching exploratory uh, inductive way of uh, discussion uh, so now uh, the floor is open for question and answer so over to you asha asha dawa 
Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, is there any question from audience? I, I saw, I thought there are like uh, 57 comments. <laughs> I thought they are like questions and I was like really scared. But I see only one question from uh, Nikunja uh, Goswami. And <clears throat> she was uh, asking me if I can suggest a single article uh, to begin with. Well, if Nikunja, you are hearing uh, this, uh, then uh, I would ask you to go for uh, Derrida for beginners. Now, it's a graphic rendering of um, um, the entire uh, uh, um, uh, uh, things about uh, deconstruction. And it's a series of books uh, that have been um, uh, rendered into the graphic uh, format. So if you are a beginner in deconstruction, I would request you to go for that. And then uh, <clears throat> Uh, somebody uh, called Tina Yose is uh, asking this question. I mean, I, I hope uh, you don't mind, uh, uh, Hassan, that I'm like speaking out the questions myself. Is that okay? No. <clears throat> okay. All right. So uh, Tina Yose is asking, uh, could you explain bricolure once again? Okay. <clears throat> bricolure is a term that signifies something that can be used like almost everywhere <clears throat> and not being rejected. Consider it to be kind of a universal solvent like water. You can use water to wash your face. You can use water when you are burnt. When you can use water to uh, 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 make a sherbet. Uh, you can use water to make ice creams. You can use water to, wa to water plants. So something that has a kind of a universal value and yet <clears throat> it does not have any shape, odor or color of its own. And, and that is the reason as to why it can be applied anywhere, a term, a word, uh, like, like this word thing. I think I have mentioned the word thing like 100 times. And then I keep on uh, using the word like so many times. So I guess this thing like, hmm, these are the words that are bricolurish words which can be used almost anywhere. I hope that answers the, the question. Yeah, she says thank you. Great. So any other question from audience? Please unmute and uh, ask. Uh, I have a, since there is no question, so uh, may I ask a question? Yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yes. So uh, how can we uh, deconstruct this, uh, the particular, the Marxist theory, the, the deconstruction of Marxism? Uh, uh, you mean uh, by Marxism, you mean classical Marxism? Yes, yes. Okay. So classical Marxism is easy to deconstruct. See. <clears throat> Uh, Marxism, what is the basic argument of Marxism? That there was, that the history of the world is the history of the class struggles, right? This is one of the basic arguments of the, uh, Marxism. Um, but to begin with, <clears throat> uh, when initially the civilizations began, there were hardly any classes. The history of the civilization began with the clashes between the tribes. Yes, there were positions. There, are, there were hierarchies in the tribes, but not classes as such. I believe that this class thing came with the capitalist intrusion into the society. Even in the feudal system, uh, th there, were, th there were positions of people rather than they being divided into these moneyed and non-moneyed uh, classes because money came into prominence associated with profit only when only when the society started to get industrialized so that is one way in which you can try to counter the the very basic idea of of uh, the uh, of the world being uh, the the history of the world being a history of class struggles is that 
there were uh, no definite classes as such and even when there were classes one class was not always fighting with another class there was always an infighting between the classes and marxism as far as i have read marxism is not really talking about the infighting between say uh, the guilds of the iron and the guilds of the bronze like the mill workers uh, are fighting uh, against a technology revamp against the cotton mill workers they are clashing because the 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 the, the, the industries the workers working in the plastic factory are not are, are often attacked verbally or actually by people working in the jute mills because this plastic thing is taking over jute but these the plastic workers and the jute workers are not uniting to fight against the real uh, the, the, the real problem the real capitalists so i believe that is one way another way and very famous uh, criticism or deconstructive criticism of marxism is that they say workers unite and they do not include women in the work that's a big mm. uh, gap uh, in their mm. uh, in the in the discourse is that okay hasan or like we can have a uh, okay yeah. uh, thank you okay. uh, yes 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 i think your voice is not clear I, yeah Yeah, you I mean, can write your question on the chat box. Yeah, that will be better. Am, am I audible right now? Yeah, better, but it am still I... has a lot of static. But I'll try to listen to your question. Go ahead. I hope it's better now, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's better. So, my question is, uh, as as you have uh, as you have very elaborately uh, uh, given the perspective of deconstruction. my question is how can we deconstruct the concept of deconstruction itself <clears throat> okay uh, you want to deconstruct deconstruction well uh, that is something what this person called uh, uh, am i audible yes yes please yeah, okay all right so see deconst what is deconstruction again deconstruction is again bunch of words right when derida says that there is no truth then this very phrase could be false there could be truth i mean if you go to the radical humanists or if you go to the liberal humanists if you uh, read the articles by uh, john m seer who is a very uh, stringent critic of deconstruction uh, he says that uh, you know what you are what you are using are words again and you are using words to destabilize words and your very words can destabilize you for example let's take the let's take the uh, example of a uh, trace okay trace uh, i said that something is it's like a mark like when you remove something what if i do not remove it but i just throw it up will will it also uh, leave a trace or if to confuse my my readers or if you if you want to confuse somebody it's like using uh, the the delete for everyone button in the whatsapp you did not write anything and yet you clicked on delete for everyone there is a trace but it's a false trace so that is how taking each and every word taking each and every term of deconstruction the very idea of deconstruction can be deconstructed logocentrism i mean logocentrism is again a word mr derida you are using words to to deflate words and it's not going to serve the purpose that's what the uh, many people had been saying against uh, deconstruction and i would really love to like have a discussion later like uh, if you can write up something and send to me and try to uh, say as to how now now i have deconstructed deconstruction so which is already happening i mean the moment you talk about deconstruction the moment you talk about definition defini- the deconstruction is gone because deconstruction cannot be defined and yet we are trying to define it so it's a kind of a continuous process of forming and deforming uh, birthing birth and death so deconstruction is always getting deconstructed even as we speak 
So uh, I hope that answers uh, your query. I don't know. I mean, it, there, there cannot be a full answer. I mean, it, it needs a kind of a whole uh, uh, class altogether to talk about uh, deconstructing deconstruction. <clears throat> yeah, he says, thank you. So there is a question that I can see on the, in the chat box. Oh, God. Can music be deconstructed? Oh, wow. This is above my head. Um, I am not in familiar waters here. Uh, music. Hmm. What is the basic unit of music? Sargam, right? Um, and what does it do? It gives us uh, any kind of sense of stability. It makes us uh, have a kind of a, a sense of something. And if it tries to do that, if it tries to be meaningful, then there is a possibility to deconstruct it. I don't know, uh, Mr. Haldar, uh, <clears throat> what kind of music you're fond of. I sometimes listen to this kind of hard rock, like head banging thing. And I cannot make sense of anything that happens over there. It just goes boom, 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 boom. And it, it kind of deconstructs the very harmonious system that music was supposed to be built upon. So in that sense, yes, music can be deconstructed, but it depends what kind of music are you talking about? Can you deconstruct classical music? Going to be uh, going to be a little difficult, but yes, why not? Because again, music uses sounds and sounds say uh, can be deconstructed, can be uh, the, 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 the hierarchy is present in the, uh, in the, in the music, like uh, why should sir come first and why not uh, some other uh, word or some other uh, thing comes first and why should I, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, say something like this and, and do something like this and not some, some uh, in some other way. So yeah, of course, deconstruction like anything else can be deconstructed. I, I guess that's uh, kind of answers your query. Hello. Is this Ram Prashad? Hello. Yeah, Ram, yes. go ahead. Sir, question. it was an uh, amazing presentation. And I was listening to your whole presentation oh, uh, since evening. But the thing is, um, I have a little query. Uh, like deconstruction is, a, it falls under the category of post-structuralism, right? Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, in general, it falls under the category of, uh, under the umbrella term of post-structuralism. Mm -hmm. And in post-structuralist view or in deconstructive view, mm -hmm. there is nothing that is, um, that we can reach at. Um, like, like there is nothing called the ultimate truth or ultimate meaning. Mm -hmm. it, it is like a meaning of meaning, right? So mm -hmm. we cannot reach the ultimate meaning. Now, my question is, if there is nothing called ultimate meaning or ultimate truth, so what we are searching at and why we are searching at? Uh, according to Levi Strauss, who was a structuralist, basically, uh, he was saying that as human beings, one of the, one of the uh, 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 activities of human beings is to find some kind of order in the chaos. We cannot live but without order. I mean, uh, even if you say that, you know, my room is like, uh, beyond, uh, you know, uh, it looks like something that is uh, before the universe was formed. And yet, you know where your things are kept. And if your mom creates some kind of order in the room, you will be very angry at your mom and say and scream that, oh, my God, you just destroyed the entire order that I had. So, Ram, the thing about us, about humans, according to Levi Strauss is, which is also talked about by Derrida, is the fact that we like order in anything, in everything. We love order. And if there is no order, and if we are aware of the same, it becomes very depressing. And hence, we create all sorts of imaginary orders. If there are imaginary homelands, if there are imaginary communities, then trust me, this is the imaginary order of things. According to deconstruction, according to post-structuralism, these orders do not exist. But we as human beings want to get a, get, get a semblance of order. And hence, we try to uh, 
you know imagine that there are orders so what we are trying to do is to receive to receive that order that imaginary order and nothing else according to deconstruction so it's like twice removed from reality thing you know very simply speaking okay 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 Thank i you. think there is no more question uh, oh, so with the permission of chair uh, we can move uh, the next section there is another question oh so okay. can you yeah sure um am i supposed to read it out from the text box chat box no there is no question in chat box can you say something about post truth in relation to deconstruction sir the question is made by uh, asked by kunal k oh, oh yeah now i can see the text yeah um yeah can you say something about post truth in relation to deconstruction <clears throat> i believe one of the fallouts of the recent uh, criticism or recent interest in uh, deconstruction uh, is the post truth thing the post truth is a reaction and as a and i believe a kind of a continuation of deconstruction that is i believe one of the relationships between post truth and uh, deconstruction but whereas post truth it is more of a political term deconstruction as far as i understand has nothing to do with uh, uh, politics it it is or it simply concerned itself with language alone and language itself it does not go into the boundaries of politics which post truth does so post truth can be can be as a kind of an application in political science application in sociology yeah so that's the relationship as far as i can understand that Okay, so uh, with, with the permission of chair, we can move to the next section. Uh, so, so Ismail is here. Ismail Sarkar. Yes, Hasan Dam here. Okay, so I would request uh, Ismail Sarkar to deliver the formal vote of thanks. Thank you, so, Ismail. Over to you. thank you assalamu alaikum and very good evening to all of you present here first of all i must thank base for giving me this opportunity to deliver a vote of thanks today on behalf of base bengali academy for social empowerment i would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to dr pritesh chakravarti sir for his uh, very insightful and interesting speech on constructing the construction the basic thank you sir for your brilliant lecture with uh, such and this information the way you have uh, presented your uh, lecture today is a very wonderful and uh, in a very very humorous way it was really helpful for a uh, student aspiring for net uh, anyway thank you uh, so much sir i must thank uh, mr musarraf hussain sir who chaired today's session uh, so well he is our very own best member always with us uh, thank you sir once again i must thank best president vice president gs and all other members especially those who are really working hard on organizing uh, this kind of lecture series on a regular basis and contributed to the social responsibilities of uh, disseminating knowledge and information thank you all uh, last but not the least i cordially thank all the delegates of uh, this program who showed a constant interest in our lecture series and whose participation is a matter of great uh, encouragement and motivation for us uh, thank you all once again have a uh, good night